coming to you from the Deep South. This is the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast. High impact leadership is not reserved for leaders, and it has nothing to do with your position, title, or rank. However, it does have everything to do with your character. It's time to climb to the next level and beyond, personally and professionally. Now, let's start making it happen with your host, Max Story. Hello, and thanks for checking out the Real People Getting Real Results show today that uh, we featured this on our Blue Collar Leadership YouTube channel as a video, and it's also on the Blue Collar Leadership podcast as an audio. So thank you for listening or watching. And if you're not watching, there's going to be some things on the screen you may not see, but be sure to go check that out. And I got a great guest today. I'm really excited to share him with, with my audience and the world. He's a go-getter. He's a, he's a real deal, Mr. Carlos Cody. Thank, welcome to the show, Carlos. Man, Mac, I'm uh, glad glad to be here. We've been knowing each other for some time, and man, just looking to uh, add as much value as I can uh, as you've added uh, value to me. Yeah, man, I know you're a value adder. So do you remember how we even come to know each other, how you discovered me? or Tell that story a little bit. I always yeah. like people to know I actually know the people I'm interviewing yeah. at some level, but I know you pretty deep level. Yes, sir. Uh, so, man, it started on uh, LinkedIn. Saw one of your uh, your posts. Uh, reached out. Um, you had your your contact information, and I called, and you actually answered. So that's. Uh, <laughs> I speak and uh, <laughs> and uh, we were able to uh, connect. And man, I think that first conversation we talked. Maybe it, it was over an hour, definitely. And man, we just connected on a lot of uh, leadership principles. And, and then from there, man, reading reading your books, uh, taking in all the knowledge, and man, you've just been uh, r- really a, a mentor um, for me in my career, learning the principles and just being available. Uh, you know, you you've talked to me through some some tough experiences. You've been there, and your insights have uh, been invaluable. So, man, I really, uh, truly, truly appreciate you uh, and everything that you're doing in the uh, leadership space. Yeah, man. Thank you. I, I I checked back on our LinkedIn. It looked like March of 2019 is when we connected on LinkedIn. That may have been when that happened. That's been a while ago. Yes, sir. That's when. Uh, yes, that is because uh, that's when I did my first uh, leadership uh, book study uh, with some of the leaders at uh, Walmart. Um, so, yep, that is yep, 2019. Yes, sir. Was that a book study with some other somebody else's book, or was that when we talked and you started doing something with my book? Yep. I can't remember. It, it was um your book. It was the uh the very first one, and I Frontline. have it. Probably the it was book, the blue jeans. Yes, sir. Book. Yes, sir. It was the blue one. That was the first one that I did a uh, leadership book study. Man, after doing that, I saw my team uh, get really inspired, and they became hungry. And uh, even from that group of leaders, man, one of them's actually uh they're at the senior manager, senior operations manager's role, uh, and they were a lead. So in three or four years, they were able to take those nuggets um, that were taught. Uh, they actually was been on some of the calls that you all do uh, with Jason uh, Denham's group. So, yeah. man, it's, 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 uh, it's some powerful stuff, man. Yeah. You've been getting on that call for a while too. And that's, that's tomorrow from the time. Yes, sir. The time we're it recording is. This. That'll be <laughs> tomorrow. I think he's about to wrap up the ladder of influence with, with Rhea. I think it's, he's on the last three. I really can't remember. Yes, sir. It's the, uh, the last one. Uh, one of the, uh, the leaders that joined is taking their uh, team through, uh, some of the books today. So they've been handing out the book to their teams and uh, trying to trying to keep the other wheel running and keep the hungry fed. Yeah, man, that's that's awesome. So uh, t- tell me, you know, you reached out to me in 19, but you were already growing. I was just another somebody you met along the way during your growth journey. If, if you don't mind, tell me how you how you became in, intentional about your personal yeah. growth journey and, and tell me how, how all the way up to today, if you want to, if you want to just yes, take, take the stage and start. How did, how did you get started on personal growth and development? Um, yeah. I definitely. Uh, so I say it started just from sports, just uh, playing football, having some really good mentors early on. Um, as football came to an end, uh, my senior year, I read, I took a leadership class. I, I don't know why I selected a leadership class, but I did. And the first book I, I read was the uh, was one of uh, John Maxwell's books. And I fell in love with it, read the book. Uh, in probably a week or two, which we had the whole semester, and I started to find my passion uh, in personal growth and in leadership. Uh, and then shortly after that, uh, football didn't work out, of course. Uh, met another guy 
and started working in the gym. And he had just this amazing vision. And I started seeing some of those leadership principles. And I said, man, something about this leadership, uh, this leadership stuff. I need to get some more books. <laughs> started um, looking at um, John Maxwell and through what my you career. Do you remember what year? Oh, man. Um, 2012, 2013 uh, yeah. is when, when that journey really, really started for me. Um, and then after that, when I got into supply chain, I was like, man, there's gotta be some, you know, some leadership stuff just for, you know, supply chain. And then I was on LinkedIn, uh, and I came across your books. I was like, okay, this is blue collar leadership. Okay. This is, this is what I'm looking for. Um, and then when I read the book, I was like, man, for people that want to get started and for people that want to understand the principles, when I read the first chapter, and it was more character focused, um, you know, not just process, not just trying to get the results, but really developing the person. I was yep. like, th this is the leadership content uh, that I need uh, for 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 the people that I work with, because, you know, in operations, you're working 12, 14 hours a day. Uh, you hand someone a 500 page book, they're going to be like, OK, thank you for the gift. And it's going to sit on the shelf somewhere. Uh, but when you hand someone a book and it's just like, hey, listen, a page a day two to three pages. It's going to take you seven to eight minutes. There's YouTube videos that you can watch. I can, you know, you can send to your team and it makes it manageable and people's like, okay. And then they're getting the nuggets, which is the transformational happens in the character. And then as they transform the character, their competence begins to be transformed from that standpoint. Uh, so man, I, I've been on this journey and it's crazy. The more you stay on this growth journey, the more you realize you don't know and the more you keep diving in uh, to more content. So <laughs> yeah. it's a, it's a never ending journey. Um, but that's, you know, when my journey started and it's, you know, it's never going to stop. Yeah. I, I think you've read about all my books. I don't know if you really have, but I think you read a <laughs> bunch of them. <laughs> Look, I, I have a special uh, section in, on my uh, bookcase just for your books. And man, for me, I just keep going back because you learn something new. And uh, even the highlighted sections that I read, it's just like I'm in a different space and it's something different that I get that I can apply. Uh, so I tell people, once you read a book, it's not that you don't put the book down, right? You keep rereading because the principles change uh, based off of certain situations that you're dealing with. And sometimes principles may not make sense when you read it, but as you move further along in life, one of those principles really sticks out. It's like, okay, this is what I need in this season. Let me keep reading, but not only reading, how do I apply it? How do I make it, uh, how do I put action behind that principle today? Um, and then through your books, I've also learned that teaching is helps you learn. So as I'm learning, OK, who, who can I share these nuggets with? Who can I bring along um, on that journey? And that's when it comes into LinkedIn sharing or whether I'm sharing it uh, with people when I'm when I'm speaking with them and they're sharing some type of experience. I was like, hey, man, this uh, what you're talking about is actually in this book, man. You should uh, you should get get this book. Let me send you the link. And, you know, I'll share with them something that I've read. Um, and that that that's usually when their uh, growth journey begins. So, yeah, that, that's outstanding. I, I know uh, we, we, I know you you a big dog now. You uh, you uh, worked your way on up in the ranks in the in the in the uh, supply chain world and logistics and distribution. Is that what you call it? What you're doing? I yes, sir. In the uh, logistics space and. I like to look at it. The higher you go is the more people to serve. So um, I like to turn the pyramid upside down. So uh, it's 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 just it's more responsibility, but it's also uh, an opportunity to lead and to serve um, and to create an environment where others can can grow personally and not just uh, personally, but can grow professionally as well. Uh, but for me, the impact is when team members, leaders, it doesn't matter. Whoever is at home at that dinner table sitting with their family, I want them to be saying something of how they're growing. Uh, I want them to be saying, man, you know, uh, things I'm learning, man, it applies here. And I want not just them to be changed at work, uh, but I want them to go home and be able to to change the the people that they uh, that live with that they're going to have the most influence with. So uh, it's, it's, it's deeper than uh, just a, a career or um, just professional growth for me. Yeah, that's outstanding, man. And I, I'm really proud of you. You're one of those guys who, who, who latched onto this stuff. Like you said, 20, 2012, that's been 12 years, man. You've been going and growing and you ain't letting off the gas. You should, Ooh. 
you're going to have a super bright future. I mean, as you get, get older and older, you got all these years behind you, you've developed so many people, you've learned so much and you're, you're like me. Once you learn what you learn, that can't nobody tell you, no, it, it don't work. They can't tell you all that because yep. you know. <laughs> yes. And absolutely. And, let me ask you to talk about a little something right there because I don't, you may remember, I may know specifically, but you've led a lot of book studies, not just that first one. You've led a bunch of them, right? And a bunch of them include and involve the frontline entry level workforce, right? So a lot of people I hear all over the country, blue collar folks don't want to read books. Some of them don't. Some white collar folks don't either. But, <laughs> but, but, you know, I, I focus on the blue collar space and a lot of those leaders who don't read books think their frontline team members don't want to read books. Can you share? <laughs> what you've seen and some of the, especially some of those who really yep. maybe hadn't read books, but latched on because you introduced them to books and they went crazy like you did. And I did. Have yep. you got any stories like that? Yes, sir. So I have a couple of stories. Um, Man, there's been, I would say there's one individual in particular, uh, Talisha, she's really taken a hold of the information. Uh, one of the hungriest uh, people I've met. Um, they have, man, gone from lead warehouse worker all the way to the same uh, position as me in record time. So wow. they're they're on a on a on a on a, uh, a fast track. And not only that, they're bringing other people along. Uh, there's other leaders that have mentored that uh, spoke with recently. Uh, man, have uh, seen three uh, three promotions uh, just from being hungry, just from learning. Um, and then even in the current position I'm in now, what most people desire out of their career is growth and development. And it takes a leader to understand that it's something that it's it's a hunger for people. Uh, but to draw at that hunger, you have to be doing the work yourself. And yeah. what I mean by that, if a leader's not reading and someone comes to them like, hey, I want to grow and develop in the company. The standard uh, the standard answer is, yeah, we got these great resources. You know, but as a leader, you understand that, OK, this person wants to grow. Hey, man, let's let's read this book. Let's talk, because we know that the growth is in the connection. And as you're involved with that person growing and they're saying, hey, I'm reading this book. Hey, there's a book that I started with. I think would be great. I'll do a book study with you. I'll even get the book for you. The only the only thing I ask is that you read. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the one thing if you read. And what I find is when you take a active uh, investment in people and you buy a resource and you get them started and they see you and you're sharing what you're learning and then they're sharing what you're learning. It gets, it gets really, uh, how I can say contagious. So every time you see this person and just like, Hey man, I read this in the book. And then it's like, we're on chapter one, they're on chapter five. And I kept just reading. I know we said we're going to do chapter one, but I'm on chapter five. Uh, <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> And um, even from the front line, um, I think it came to visit when I was at uh, GXO. Yeah. And man, we had a, a team member that, man, they ate that book up. They uh, joined a, a network marketing. They shared it with their whole team. And they didn't see the results in the company, but they were telling me how it was impacting their life outside of work, how they went and they were started doing some great things from a network marketing space because uh, they bought the sales book. And they realize it's me, like it's it's me who needs to change. I'm 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 selling myself. I'm influenced. And oh, then yeah, to you, see that person, yes, sir. You you're talking about who's buying you? And my yes, book, sir. my sales book. Who's buying you until you sell yourself? You won't sell much, right? And they yes, they figured that out. I got to sell me before I can sell my stuff. <laughs> Nobody they wants to buy me. They don't want me to offer them some stuff. <laughs> Absolutely, and um, you know they shared with me because we were we were running low on hours and. Uh, just from a business standpoint, we didn't have uh, the work, but they took it upon themselves like, hey, I'm going to work on my business. Uh, they came back and said, like, hey, man, after reading that book, my sales are up. I'm, I'm making an extra five hundred dollars. I got a team now, you know, and then they started selling me uh, <laughs> selling me some stuff. <laughs> and I, I, I purchased not because of the product, but because of the person. And yeah. that's when I was like, yep, the, that's the principle of the book. Right. I, I'm, I'm not buying the product. I'm buying it because it's you. Uh, and I want to yep. help support. Um, so, man, it's, it's people that's hungry. And uh, as businesses, we have to find out a way to feed those hungry people or someone else will. Um, so that's that's uh, it's it's a lot of hungry people out there, Mac, and they're wanting it. And we just have to be a vessel to be able to point them in the right direction with the other uh, right resources. Yeah. Carlos, how many people and you may, it may be currently or maybe somewhere in the past, but what's the most people you've had? Reporting to you, like below you, Ooh. not below you as a person, but in the org chart. 
Um, the most was Amazon, and it was anywhere from nine hundred uh, team members all the way up to twelve hundred to fifteen hundred wow. uh, doing peak season. And the the most leaders I've had has been a total of twelve um, salary uh, level leaders that have reported up to me. Yeah, man. And so, how have you seen you personally dealing with? Let's let's talk about those first. The the twelve leaders. The, the ones when it ain't got to be them specifically, it could be any leaders in general. But when you the leaders who report to you, how, how have and you know this very well because you, you you've been there along your journey. Right. You've been there the whole time from the time you yes, started. Sir. But how has you developing you helped you lead those leaders better? Man, it's uh, it's it's as simple as this. You can't you can't give what you don't have. Um, and if you're not pouring in, you have nothing that flows out. Uh, a lot of people ask me, man, how are you writing all this content on LinkedIn? I'm like, man, I'm reading every day. It's just, it's, <laughs> it's like, it's, it, it's, it's not a, it's not a matter of, um, how much to write. It's like, what do I write or what I'm, what I'm learning. And I also share with people know a lot of the times the sharing is helping me learn. Um, so it's, it's a two part thing. And then, you know, one of the, of course, you know, one of my favorite book is your, your lean book. So that 80, 20 of, okay, yeah, we're going to talk about process improvement. We're going to get to all of that, but these first minutes are going to be geared towards a leadership truth. Um, and I try to have those moments with the team where it's not, it's not just teaching a process improvement. It's not just teaching a routine or standard. But having those moments of, OK, here's our leadership principle um, for the week. We're going to control what we can control. What does that mean? You know, we show the we show the iceberg. OK, what's in our control? OK, what can we influence? And then what are the things that's outside our control? So I think it just comes with as you're learning, you're pouring out and you're sharing with others. And then from that standpoint, you really get to see who the hungry people are. Uh, they'll come up to you. They'll make themselves known. It's, it never fails. It's going to be at least one or two people that say, hey, man, I really I really love that principle. Um, you inspired me. Hey, I, I, I want to learn more. And that's when that that's when leadership becomes fun, when you have those leaders that have bought in because you, you just have a different um, you have a different connection because you found someone that's hungry. And then as you keep feeding over a while, man, you get this large group of people that Wherever they go, they always remember you stay connected. And that's how you build a, a leadership network of people um, that you're always connected to. You talk every now and then. We we at some point someone comes to a challenge, we talk, hey, how are you dealing with this? Or how did you deal with that? Hey, this is how I dealt with it. This is where I got this nugget from. Um, and then that journey just continues, um, continues to grow. But I would tell everybody, you can't, you can't give what you what you don't have. So make sure you're pouring in so that you have a, a well to, you know, that flows through you of uh, leadership, truths and principles. <laughs> That's so good. Carlos, you're just awesome, man. I love you. I, I loved you from the beginning. You ain't never <laughs> stopped. I just love hearing your story. I mean, I'm really glad you, you was able to make time to get on, on the, on the show. Cause I, I, anybody who watches this, this real people getting real results show, I, I want them to know you and, and, and follow you on LinkedIn and, and watch what you're doing and reach out to you if, if, if they hungry, right? They ain't nothing better than feeding somebody who's hungry. <laughs> yes, sir. No, no, nothing like it. Nothing like it at all. So you were talking about 900 to 1200 people at that one time. And did you, did you ever go out and talk to the folks on the front line when you have that many people? I, I know that you is did. I want you, <laughs> I want you to talk about that. Cause there's a leap. There's a lot of leaders, Carlos. I just made a post just the other day. This I remember back when we went to to do this uh, leadership development support for this little tiny organization, and I mean they wasn't ten people working there. And the top leader told me they never. Sometimes they'd go a whole day and never talk to any other people. I'm like, how? Man. In a little bitty how? building, man. How how did how does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I know how it happens because that person don't have any care for the people you saw yep. management instead of leadership yep. but talk about that when you got that many people how did you how did you leverage leadership yep. to go out i mean why did you do it why yep. and what did it look like i mean at the end of the day i say the the people that are going to solve the problems one those are your your frontline uh, team members and then it's a leader's job really to create that environment that others can thrive in so if you're not walking the floor if you're not aware of the issues and you're not tending uh, to the to the team. 
how are you going to know what to solve? If not, you'll be in the office, think that you're solving problems. You'll roll it out and the team will be like, why in the world they do this? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, you, you just, you have to make it a priority. Uh, so for me, with a large team like that, I just made it a priority on different days, like different departments. You, you realize you can't touch everybody, um, but you start with touching one. And then what ends up happening is you start to speak life in others. You start to believe in others because your belief and how you feel about others, they feel it. Um, it, it, it can't be faked. You can say all of the right words. But if you truly don't believe in the people that are working with you, that are on the front lines, the ones that are that are u- utilizing their body, their energy, um, to produce uh, a product or to produce some type of unit of measure, uh, then you're, you're just, you're, you're, you're not leading because people feel that belief. So, you know, you have to make it a part of your daily routine to go out to instill that belief, to celebrate the successes, the small wins, the progress. Um, and the only way you can do that is by being present uh, and actually talking to the people. Hey, how's it going? You know, how's your family? As you learn these things about people, word starts getting around. One person's like, hey, man, you know, Carlos came and told me this great news. I didn't even know he recognized the, some of the things I've been doing. He said he saw me the other day. And you give those examples, not just say, hey, great job. Keep doing it. No. Hey, man, I really appreciate how you went and helped another team member out yesterday. I was walking, I saw that, and I want to come out here to let you know that that's the type of character we want on our team. And we, re- I really, truly appreciate it. Hey, what's your name? How long have you been with the company? You get into those questions. Uh, and then as you do that day over day over day over day, uh, positive influence starts to build up. And as you're doing it with your leaders, you start to replicate yourself. And what ends up happening is everything is an extension of your character, Uh, And as your team, as you're leading your team, the team starts leading the people. And now it's just everything is connected and congruent. Uh, And it all starts with how we treat our team members. It all starts with how we treat our leaders, Uh, because at the end of the day, your team is going to be a reflection of uh, who you are as a leader. And if you're a great leader, some of that, that a lot of those principles are going to reflect to the team. And if you're micromanaging, not caring for your leaders, then that's all that's what's going to um, happen to the front lines. But at the end of the day, as a leader, you have to be on the floor. Uh, and one other thing that I did too, while I was at Amazon was my desk was out on the floor. Yeah, man. <laughs> I had an office. That's good stuff right there. <laughs> I had an office, but, uh, I found a way to set up where I was in the middle of the building. So at any wow. time anybody wanted to, you know, talk to me, they could, uh, and I was honest with people. Like if I was going to a meeting and I knew this was going to be a long conversation, I was like, Hey, I am going to meeting, but when can I come back and talk to you? And I actually made sure I came back and talked to that person. Um, so people just want you to be upfront. Um, they want to see you, they want to talk to you and you need to be in an area where people have that, uh, you know, that opportunity. Uh, no other leaders have like, well, man, how you get your job done? Uh, this is my job. <laughs> Taking care of the people uh, is absolutely, uh, you know, my job. And I want to be close and I want to be connected. And as I have to step away, you just plan for it. Um, and, and that just comes with a lot of leadership skills that you learn, how to prioritize your time. Um, and the main thing is you have to prioritize people. The only managers that I see that struggle with that is the ones that don't prioritize people. Yeah, you, you don't have time for something you don't prioritize, but if you prioritize it, you have plenty of time for it. Um, so I'd say that was uh, some of the things that has just led um, you know, to impacting the people, but not only impacting the people uh, on a leadership side, you get, you, you get your best results for talking through issues with the team. Hey team, this is what we're trying to accomplish. Um, I know you all have a lot of great ideas and uh, we want to make sure to give you the opportunity uh, to present those ideas. Here's the here's what we're trying to solve and let the team go. Oh, yeah, we can do this. We can. Oh, I've been doing this. And you hear all their ideas and you and people feel heard and understood. And I tell you, Mac, you get to a place where you're like, all right, we got 20 ideas. We got to start getting started on some of these. Let's keep (laughs) let's keep some of these because the ideas keep coming because the team realize, hey, this is a leader I can go talk to. This is a leader that listens. This is a leader that hears and they want to keep sharing. So I would just tell leaders, man, never lose focus of the most important um, aspect of your business, which is the uh, the people. Yeah, that's. You got good stuff, Carlos. You're just dropping it out nonstop. Tell me, though, about 
I got to know about the desk. How did how'd you get the, you, had, you this one you're leading nine or 1200 people, right? And yes, you got sir. a, probably got a nice office with all the other folks in the office somewhere. And how did, when you walked in, you didn't have the desk on the floor. That was your choice. Nobody put you there. You decided to do it. How did that thought process, what led you to yeah. that? What was it like? What did everybody else have to say about it? The other <laughs> leaders and tell me about that part. Yep. So uh, actually, I found a space on the floor I, when we were do start. I realized, OK, everyone's here in the morning. I was like, hmm, let me get with uh, my, you know, the equipment team. Hey, can I get two screens set up right here and, a, you know, a desk? I want to, you know, be right here. That's like, hey, man, yeah, sure. No problem. Uh, so got that worked on, had my two screens. So literally right by startup, that's where my my area was. And that became where I would uh, time I would come in. I wouldn't go to the back. Um, I put my stuff in the refrigerator and then it's right to the floor. I would sit up there. I would catch the team that was leaving. They would bring me, hey, this is what we dealt with. Man, glad you're here. Can I can I show you something real quick? It's really going to impact your shift. Or Then I would walk with them and I would just get so much, uh, you know, inf information just from being out there. Uh, but it was just being intentional. It's just, OK, this is where my I want my area to be. This is what I want to set up. I let the team know, hey, if you ever have anything and you all need me, this is this is where I'm at. Um, if I have meetings, I let the team know, hey, I'm going, I have a meeting. I need to be in a quiet space for this one. Uh, I'll have it. But most of the times that is where the team could find me. And if they couldn't find me there, I was, you know, on the floor because uh, I was I would I was getting just as many steps as my team uh, as my manager. <laughs> <laughs> 14, 18,000 steps, man, a day at work, just walking around, engaging um, with the team. And that's that's, you know, I made it made it my part. And I got a lot of that from just books I've read. Like uh, I, one of the things I'm I'm doing now, I'm in current position. If I have five, five cards, I walk around. I was like, all right, who can I write a, a, a quick note, a hand, a hand card? Um, and I've done it. And I always make sure on those cards, I add something like one of my leaders has uh, three daughters. And I, I made sure on that card, it said something about you all should be proud of your dad. He is doing an amazing job, an amazing leader. And he, you know, every day he comes here, he's his wise, you all. And making sure that it's something um, personal um, and just hand those cards out, just being intentional, like, OK, I'm going to hand out five, five cards this week. Um, the personal touch goes a long way. Um, but man, it's just nothing like being on the floor in the action. Uh, now, some of the people didn't like that I was on the floor. Uh, you know, there's a, a thing that goes around that, hey, leaders, you know, you got to separate yourself from the people. You got to be, I ain't buying uh, that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, you need to you separate and, you know, managers, we have to stick together. I'm like, well, you know, I don't, I, I might have a management title, but uh, I know better. Um, and you I'm know, glad. leadership is, is about influence and I can't influence people that don't see me. I can't influence people I can't connect with. And at the end of the day, yeah, I could lead with the iron hand, but time I walk away. All right. Forget what he said. We're going to keep doing what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true, man. That's how it works. Right. So it is. So tell me, you ain't got to, obviously, don't you ain't got to say where, when, any names, and you ain't even got to say anything if you don't want to. You say, I skip that. But, but have you, I, I, I lead and mentor a lot of folks like you, the real, the real go getters, the people who understand leadership, not management, right? And, but I know I hear a lot from, from a lot of folks that, uh, for whatever reason, they struggle a lot with the leaders above yeah. them because, the leaders above them don't want to lead. They want to manage. So then when they get a leader like you that comes into an organization, it causes all kind of friction yeah. for you because you're having to fight that battle. And I know a lot of folks just like you who talk to me all the time because I'm helping mentor them through that battle. Can, can you describe or anything you'd like to share for leaders who are like you? who are Because all of you, unless you own your own company, you got to fight that battle most of the time because most of the time when there's somebody like you, Carlos, they ain't somebody like you above most of the time. Hardly ever is there a leader at, that who's leading at your level above you as you go into these organizations, which you figured out already. And and so can you share some of your struggle, give somebody some tips how to deal with that? Who, who Maybe they just starting out. Maybe they're a team leader, a supervisor, entry level, and they just latched onto this stuff and they don't know what's coming, do they? <laughs> nope. <laughs> they think, man, um, it's <laughs> awesome. You're like it's pushed by a manager up above. Share something about uh, any of your journey related to that. 
Yep. So I, I would say the first thing is always take complete ownership. Um, and what I mean by that is at any given point, you're you're not dealing with another person. You're dealing with the man in the mirror, which is yourself. Uh, so it goes back to that principle, control what you can control. Uh, once you get into leadership stuff, you begin to have a confidence in who you are, what you stand for, um, your values. And there's some things that, you you know, you can't compromise on. Uh, but at the end of the day, you in a leadership position, you're also a follower. Um, so you have to lead with respect. That means you do need to respect uh, whoever is above you. Um, as long as it doesn't cross those values and you have to be OK with those consequences. If if someone has a, a micromanaging style, fear based leadership and that's not who you are, you have to be OK with being true to who you are, being authentic and having a conversation is a very tough thing to do is having that conversation um, because at the end of the day, that person does have uh, quote unquote control over over how you kind of progress in your career. Um, but if you're standing on values, you're standing on principles, um, you have to be true and just understand that when you in those situations and you're going to be in those situations, if you if you're if you're reading Mac's book, or if you're reading anything on leadership development that deals with character, uh, you're going to deal with that. And all of Matt books teach you how to navigate that. And then you will find out that as you become that person, you'll become higher desirable and you'll have options. Uh, so you will never be tied to poor leadership. You'll never be tied because at the end of the day, regardless of who's ever at the top, they every company wants a leader. Why does every company want a leader? Because they want what leaders do, which is deliver results. Uh, now, if you find a leader that understands leadership principles, they'll understand that how you deliver results is not by management, it's through leadership. And you'll find yourself in a really great situation where your opportunities become endless. Uh, but when you're dealing uh, with a manager or with someone that has just different different viewpoints, you serve, you stay humble, um, you stay respectful, you don't, well, I, I know leadership, you 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 do you do what you you need to do and you control what you can control and you try to influence. Hey, I'm reading this book. Maybe you want to read this book too. Hey, but after a certain while, if you realize that hey, you know I'm not making any headway. Hey, this isn't working. Then that's when you need to take control of your career. You need to take control of your options and you need to start assessing. Hey, maybe this isn't um, a good fit. Maybe this isn't the right. Uh, not the right organization, just maybe this isn't the right leader that I need to be under. Um, because one thing I have realized is that the leadership at the top is what's going to flow down and you can control the impact of your team. Um, but at the end of the day, when it starts coming down and now you now the whole team chemistry is off um, because of one uh, leader's decision to lead with fear of micromanagement, um, it creates a toxic environment. And sometimes the best thing that you can do as a leader is to choose to uh, walk away um, from what's toxic and find something that is going to align uh, with your leadership. Um, and that gets into some other stuff, man. Me, me and you have talked about, Mac, you know, you got to become good at interviewing uh, the people that are interviewing you. Um, yeah, because yeah. People can talk culture all day. We care. We want to help you grow. We want to help you win. And it's like, whoo, that sounds great. And then time you get in, you realize like, okay. They don't know was... what they talk about. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth, ain't it? <laughs> it's, a, it's, like, it's like what was stated and what's actual is Two complete different things. Okay, it sounded good, but uh, that's 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 not the case. But just make sure you know you interview the person um, that's interviewing you, and and to try to put yourself in the in the best situation. Um, yeah, that'd, but, that'd be like me interviewing somebody and say, "Yeah, we're gonna teach you some trigonometry and some 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 uh, <laughs> physics, you know, calculus and all that stuff." And I'm talking it up, but then you get in there and I don't even know how to do math. <laughs> 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 Man, no, that's 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 exactly it. But I, you just have to ask questions. Like if people say they care about people, hey, give me an example of a time you care for a leader or a team member. Uh, and if you, <laughs> well, I bought pizza last week. I bought everybody pizza. <laughs> I didn't go in there and eat it with them. I just bought it and dropped it off. 
<laughs> we bought the pizza, but we left out the part that we used the pizza to get everybody together to have a uh, a beatdown session. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's the truth, though, right? That's what oh. that's what happens. And ha- have you ever just talking about that? Have you ever led a book study where your leaders were in in the in the book study and you were leading it? Has that ever happened? Never happened. I have I have not had. Man, at one place I had a, a leader discourage it. Um, I've heard yeah. that from more folks than, than just yep. you. I've had, heard that yep. from a lot. Yep. Even even team members that want to do it on time off, it's come, well, the policy and technically we can't, and technically you can't talk the team members off the clock and technically, and it just came a whole bunch of, te- okay, so technically we don't want to grow and develop the people. That's what I'm hearing. Got technically it. Technically <laughs> we can't lead. Technically we can't lead anybody. We got to manage yep. everybody like they're an object, right? That's, yep. that's the sad <laughs> truth, though. That's where a lot of people work. They work in those organizations. And like you said, when they start reading my type content, whether it's my stuff or somebody else's, they start to realize realize that. And unfortunately, a lot of people become reactive. That doesn't help them. They end up nope. being a part of the problem instead of a part of the solution, especially for themselves, but also for their team members. But I want to ask you before I forget about it, and we, we still got t- plenty of time, but you mentioned my lean book. And for those who don't know about that, it's called uh, Blue Collar Kaizen. Leading Lean and Lean Teams. Ria's got the, the link to the screen. You can go check out any of these books we've been talking about. BlueCollarLeadership.com forward slash download. But yep. that book, you've told me many, many times that book's your favorite book. But I wrote that book. For anybody who don't know, I wrote it. Well, I was a lean consultant, right? I led over 11,000 hours leading Kaizen teams, teams through process improvement. I wrote it for people like me who are leading Kaizen events. And and you, you've never been a consultant or that's not been your job to physically lead Kaizen event every week after week after week. But what, what even caused you to read the book? And then what was it about that book that you yep. latched on to? Because I don't know. Did you just read it because you read my other books and you liked them? You're like, what is this book about? Or tell me about why you even read it. Man, so I, I love process improvement and not just from a uh, standpoint in the business. I look at that book as it's a, it is a transformational book for anyone wanting to lead a team. Uh, and what I mean by that is as a leader, you're a problem solver. You never, ever stop problem solving. And the higher up you go, the bigger the problems, the bigger or the better your problem solving has to be. But at the same time, the higher you go, the more removed you are um, from the problem and the issues. And that book to me is not just a, a process improvement book. It's a people improvement book. It really teaches you how to to delegate. It really teaches you um, some of those skills that you need to learn um, because at the end of the day, as a leader, the 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 most important thing that you can do or your your greatest return is going to be in the people that you develop. Uh, and when you're able to teach and train uh, people how to one improve their self, their character, and their competence, uh, because that character is going to drive uh, the thing that every business talks about, but just doesn't quite understand, which is culture. And I tell people culture is a, ve- a very intangible thing that drives very tangible results. And what I mean by that is the culture. I know people may have seen the quote. How do you feel when you know you're about to go into work for the week? Is it a good feeling? Is it an anxious feeling? Is it, a, you know, is it a positive or negative feeling? That that is letting you know the culture. Now, that's not something anybody has has done, you know, but it's something it's a feeling. It's something that can't be measured, but it has it carries so much weight Uh, when people feel inspired, when people feel motivated, when people um, feel that they're excited about the workday. uh, They know they're going to be challenges. There's no other things they're going to do. They don't like, but they're genuinely excited. That's culture. And that book to me, helps me understand how to shape that culture. It talks about setting intentions as a leader, which I think is so important. Um, oftentimes, we just show up, go to our meetings, and whoo, what a day. I was <laughs> I was busy all day, but you look back, it's like, okay, what did I get accomplished? Who did I impact? Who did I empower? Who got better? Um, did anything even change because I was, I was there for the day? Um, and that book really shows you how to do that. And I would advise that anyone that's in a in a leadership role leading a team, there is not uh, a better book I can find that has all of the principles and everything, the, the key things that you need uh, to not only lead a team, but to really improve and help people transform and then help people to solve problems and help other leaders um, 
lead their teams. Uh, and that's why that's one of my my uh, most favorite books. It's just I just actually finished it up <laughs> uh, last week. Again, all right. <laughs> I did. <laughs> again, again. Because you know, uh, I want to make sure the audience knows not not you just finished it up the first time. <laughs> again, I keep I keep going back to it. Um, man, it's, it's 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 a very impactful book, and I get something different every time. And for me, this time it was uh, it was really about okay, what intentions am I setting for the day? What intentions or priorities am I you know giving the team? And then hey, here's what we're trying to accomplish, and leaving that how. Um, up to the team and then I kept uh, sharing with the team the the character and competence piece uh, a lot of teams focus on competence but I'm like y'all that character it's gone <laughs> that's that it's, that's I mean that's the, the magic pill right there that's the, that's it the is. link for any team it is that's not performing it ain't the competency everybody's got way too much I mean more than they need most people got more especially as a team when you combine everybody's competency you got more than you need Exactly. Exactly. But if you're a leader that can draw that out, because we all have strengths and weaknesses. And at the end of the day, it just comes down to, all right, it's influence. At the end of the day, it's it's all influence. If the team respects you, if the team uh, would would follow you without your title, you're you're doing something right. And you can sense that culture. Um, you know, right. Like currently right now, we, we, we have a lot of leaders that's out. We have a lot of leaders on lead. It's, it's a lot, uh, a lot of pressure. Um, but I'm happy to say, you know, the team that I'm currently leading, we just had one leader get promoted. Um, no one is, you know, out and, you know, the team, we let each other know each and every day that we appreciate each other. Uh, and man, it's, it's powerful. My team is the reason I, I, I keep going. Let me just say that because they are they are a hungry team. They work together. They're unified. They collaborate. And I'm seeing so much growth. And it's not just um, personal. I mean, it's not just professional. It's things that um, personally um, and, and, you know, you experience that when you get those. You, you, you and I know, Mac, when you get those messages, man, from the team, it just comes out of blue. It's like, hey, man, I really appreciate you. Like. You're 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 helping me grow the things that you're that you're doing. I want to learn more in leadership, um, and then they start taking those steps, right? I'm I'm going back to school. Um, there's three team members on our team right now that have made the decision to go back to school, and I you know I check in on, hey man, I'm I'm all A's, man. I told you I'm I'm on it, I'm on it. I said, man, keep up making it happen. Um, and seeing people like that is what keeps my leadership tank full because that's what it's all about to me at the end of the day is how do we uh, impact those people yeah you you said something there i want you to touch on and, and again just share much as you want but you talked about the personal side and i know you used to reach out to me quite often you was always you, you got your, you got your new little boy now but you had your nephew <laughs> before and i remember you were leading him through book study i think yep. using my book 10 foundational elements of intentional transformation how to become yes, your sir. best self and i even got him on the phone and talked to yep. him can you share if if you want to if you're comfortable yep. with it sharing you know your role in his life and yep. how cuz he seems to be an exceptional young man and that's yep. because of your leadership at home you know talk about that that yes, person side that's just a great example if you can share it yes sir so man we have We've had Devin, my nephew, maybe four, four years now. Um, so I will say this. Will be full time. Yes, sir. He's with us full time. Yep. Um, he is actually starting on his his football team. Uh, didn't start, didn't play at all last year. Uh, one of the things that you know really been working on is just mindset, his uh, belief in his in himself, and I'm just you know avid on. I'm gonna do it. Watch. I'm gonna be the bet. Try to be the best examples I can be. So I try to make sure he sees me reading. Um, uh, that, um, when we're in the car playing some type of, uh, motivation, some type of nugget. So he's getting things, uh, and he's starting to, uh, starting to learn. So we're also a part of a, another group called Iron Sharpens Iron. Uh, that's, uh, just through our church that we go to on Saturdays. It's really helped. Um, but I say the biggest thing is realizing that it takes a village. Um, and what I mean by that is, I also understand that as an uncle, I can't, I'm not a one-stop shop, meaning there's other men that needs to be in this life. There's other men that need to coach him. There's other, other men that need to speak life. So one of the things that I've just been trying to do more of is just get him exposed to as many people 
as many different things as possible. Um, so the things that that I try to influence him on, if he hears it from someone else, is different. I can say some 30 times and then uh, a friend of ours can say like, hey, man, you need to do that. And he's hooked. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I just said this. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I said I just said this. He didn't get it from me, but it's just understanding you are, you are that. Paying <laughs> <laughs> but hearing it from someone else, uh, it, it it it's it's a difference maker. And then even with my son, just trying to speak life. Um, words are so powerful. And even though he may not understand, I just try to make sure I'm telling him constantly, "I love you. I'm proud of you. You're going to do great things. You're a leader." And I just want to keep. How old is he now? Ah, uh, man, three. Three. He's Won't three. be long though. He'll be ready for some Seven Habits for Happy Kids. You, do you know about that book, Carlos? No, I, 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 I don't. Yeah, you need to get oh. that one. Seven you Habits know. of Happy Kids. Yeah, it's like a big picture book. It's 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 meant for I think six years, you know, and, and up when they wrote it. But today it might be ready for three year olds. <laughs> they <laughs> they they learning so much faster <laughs> than kids are, and especially with a parent like you. And I have never met your wife, but I'm sure she's got to be exceptional to to, to, to be hanging out yep. with you and you hanging out with her. Y'all got, <laughs> y'all got something special going on there. I'm, I'm sure. Yes, sir. She um, keeps, keeps books. Like each night she's reading something to him, a picture book. Like he's getting into habits. Like he gets in bed, he's grabbing, he's grabbing his book and he's, yeah, he's uh he's man. He's definitely, uh, definitely engaged. So uh, we just want to pour as much as we can and at the same time realize like, hey, nothing can be forced. All we need to do is just guide, uh, create those opportunities and just expose expose them to as much as we can and and just love them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's that's good, man. You got to get that book, though, and get it. I mean, you may be ready to start using it. I remember I shared with a maintenance guy in Texas one time about that book and it was it was sometime later. I don't remember how long, but I remember the day I was in my garage at home and he called me up and on a weekend and I answered. And he was in tears, man. He said he said, I started going through that book with my grandson who was five or six. He yep. said. And I had been actually a lot of the Kaiser book that, you, you know, Blue Collar Kaiser, a lot of those stories I tell in there was when I was supporting that guy's company. So a lot of the, you nice. know, he was involved. He, I called the maintenance team tip of the spear. The maintenance team, they were bought in. They were they were helping us make all that stuff happen. They were gung nice. They loved the leadership. They loved the lean. And he was one of those maintenance guys who, who helped make it happen. But he said, man, I started doing that. He said, I got a relationship with, with, my, with my grandson that I didn't even know I could have. And he just latching onto this. And he valued those principles so much that when he, when he started sharing that seven habits for happy kids book, he, he didn't have any idea he could teach, you know, impact the young kids life into with those principles. And then, you know, they got they got seven habits for teens, too. That might be another oh. good one for your nephew. And and Rio talks about it a lot. She likes, you know, seven habits for teens. And John Maxwell's got us. Sometimes you win. Sometimes you learn for teens. If you didn't know that, he's got a teen teen version. So I share those things with you. And if y'all watch it, if you ain't watching and you listen to the podcast, the whole time I've been talking, Carlos doing what Carlos does. He's taking notes. He's writing yeah. things down. <laughs> he's going to get them ordered. That, that's what high impact people do. Them things will be ordered for the end of the day. No problem. <laughs> the, I am uh, definitely going to order, man. I just uh, ordered some smaller books, which I've got right here. I want to go through the, uh, the some of the John Maxwell smaller series books, just yep. a lot of nuggets. Yeah, man. Um, and then I think, man, I'm about to go back through in the uh, the morning, which, hold on, I need to grab it real quick. This okay. book here, you got a special place on my uh, bookshelf, so it's easy to grab all of them. <laughs> Look, I recognize some of those. What, which one are you missing? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know oh. about all of those. Are, are you actually missing any that I need to, I need to um, see? I, don't, I think I have all of them. I'm pretty sure. I think I need to get the updated one. This is the one I was using at um, Amazon during our yeah, uh, startup meeting. A volume two. That's the only one I think that I'm missing on. and. About to go back through this one in the uh, the morning, so I'm gonna read a, a chapter in the morning of this and start sharing some of uh some transformational tips with the. That's that's good. We'll any anybody from America, the U.S. who who does one of these shows with us, we send them a, a signed book as a thank you, a small token of appreciation. Do you want that volume two of the two box tips? You want to I'll, send me that? No, I'll take it. Yeah, I man. will take it. So, so text me. <laughs> Make sure when we're done, text me your mailing address. Make sure I got that, and, and we'll get that to you on the way. So I appreciate nice. that. So yes, I want to ask you, 
actually, I want to touch back on the Kaiser book. Uh, may, maybe why you like that book so much is because all the stuff I talk about and teach about what I'm sharing in there is, is when I was learning to apply, you know, 11,000 hours leading teams, different team every week, six to eight, 10 people. But most of the time they hated me on Monday. They didn't like me, but, but all the stories you heard is, I mean, there's some people and they can lead a team six months and they can't connect yep. with them. And I had to do it really in a day or two because I didn't have a week to connect. We got to get results yep. by Friday. So we, I had to connect like fast as I could get going yep. on Monday and Tuesday. So this, that book, maybe that's why you liked it because it was all this stuff honed into to really how did I do it? Now, I'm not anything special, but those principles are special. And yeah. every single week was awesome. Even no matter how yes. much they hated me on Monday, every single week was awesome. That's why I'm like you. They ain't nobody can tell me this <laughs> stuff don't work. They can't tell. It'd be like somebody trying to tell me gravity don't work. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Whatever okay. you think. <laughs> Get me off the side of that bridge. It don't work. Let me watch you fly <laughs> off the side of it. <laughs> So, oh man! So I want to just ask you a couple of different ways, especially from a leader standpoint. Yep. How you deal with toxic people now versus maybe in the past? Have you have you grown? Yep. Has there been an evolution of whenever your first? You remember what year your first leadership position was when somebody was reporting to you? What year was that? Man, two thousand and two thousand sixteen. I'm saying two thousand sixteen. 2016 was the first time you were a boss, a leader, woman of authority, yes, whatever somebody wants to call it. You had yes, people sir. reporting to you. And you've been in a role like that ever ever since, since 2016. So, yes, sir. so if you've have you grown, there there ain't no doubt. Your whole your whole journey, you've been dealing with toxic people on your team. Can you share how as you've grown as a leader, yep. the way you dealt with toxic people has changed? Share, yep. share that's that'd probably be really some good stuff you about yep. to drop. So I would tell people it all starts with uh, setting the the expectations, the the values, who you are as a person. And over the years, it's grown. So I would say starting out as a lead, it was a little bit different. So I'm going to kind of take take through a journey of how that's grown, how that's changed. Uh, so starting out as a lead, I just kind of took the toxic, <laughs> just being honest. Didn't know of, what it was just part of. <laughs> we need it. Um, but even in that role, I started progressing. Think in six six months of that role, I got promoted to a supervisor. I started to look at it a little bit different. I started noticing when I'm walking the floor and team members mentioning certain names over and over and over and over again. Uh, then I started to realize, like, man, we're promoting a lot of people that have the skill, but they can't lead others. And I tell people there's a difference. So I started looking at leadership different dealing with toxic people. It's like uh, when people make references, man, this person is great. They get the job done. And I'm like, that's great. But if I promote them, everyone's production that's 100% goes down to 50 because can't nobody stand that person. <laughs> they're going to be talking about them. They're going to be mad. They're going to be withholding production. They're going to be sabotaging quality. They're going to yep. be delivery, all kind of stuff, right? I can't work <laughs> this weekend when you need me because I just can't, even though it's, it's, I'm just frustrated with your leadership, yeah. letting us have to deal with this toxic person. Yeah. That's all that kind of stuff happens, right? I it does. You, <laughs> <You're awesome>. <laughs> <laughs> and people ask like, hey, who's um, who's working today? They're like, so it's just, I don't know. I, ain't, I can't make it. <laughs> and then you just, just start to know these trends. So then you have to have those tough conversations. And tough conversations can be done in love. It's just, hey, this is, it, it's just like a, a, a manager would manage, I guess you can say. But you just say, hey, hey, this is some of the feedback I'm getting back from the team. This is what we're hearing. Here's the values that we want to have. Hey, I have a resource. I want to help you. I see the potential in you. Now you're speaking to belief. You're you're you gave the feedback. You gave that that I guess you can say that hard little woo. Oh man, that hit. That hurt a little bit. But as a leader, now it's just like I believe in you. Now I can't make you do anything, but I want you to let's let's set some time. I want you to take this. Let's read. Let's talk through it. And as we talk through it, I, I, I want to help you come up with an action plan or game plan of how we can can improve. Now, that person has a choice in that moment. They can either take the feedback, not take it. They can start to act and read. Now, if that person's willing, I'm willing to work with them. But if they can't if they can't do this and we can't read and we keep having the same issues, it's my role also as a leader at that point to say, hey, this is not, you know, the maybe an opportunity is going to work and you you 
you go your separate ways. Um, but at the end of the day, it's your job as leader to make sure that the culture and the environment uh, is protected. Um, from people that are, you know, choosing to, I guess you can say, be toxic and choosing not to not to lead, but uh, manage people. Um, so at, th- at those situations, you can you can go your separate ways. Um, now, how I have have grown up now, it's it's su- it's at such a level that sometimes you're you're not even aware of a lot of the issues that's happening. So that's why being on the floor and being present is so critical. So people can. You want people to bring you stuff. You don't want people not to feel like they can't talk to you. And then you start. It's the same thing. You start hearing the same names. You start hearing a department or, hey, this section is struggling. Well, why is the section struggling? Man, The it's a little toxic or it's a little hostile. Oh, OK, I, that's where I need to go. So then you go and you start asking questions. You start meeting with people and you start to find that it's an individual that's managing. It's an individual that isn't uh, leading. It's it are it's an individual that's not present and they're not even aware of what's going on in the department. Um, and those are the things that usually you can, you usually can get in front of and you can handle uh, because the team sees you present. you have those expectations. The team knows what your, your values are. And most times people want to do the right things. Most times I have found that people like being a part of a team where they're valued and growth is there. So usually they they give you more than what's required. Uh, so lately, I would say in this position with the current team, I, ha- I haven't had those uh, those issues. Uh, the team is quick to <laughs> see, oh no, we don't want that on our team. that's uh, that's that's not the behavior that we uh, that we want. And we have the you know the conversations and and we keep going. Um, but as a leader, if you're creating that environment, most people want to do the right thing and most people will get on board. They just need need a little little motivation, a little help and know that, hey, I believe in you. You can absolutely do this, but we do have to get these things corrected and I'm going to be there to help you. Um, I just can't do it for you. You're going to have to, you know, take some initiative and do it. But if you're willing to do it, I'm willing to continue to, you know, to work with you. Um, and that's just people letting people know that it's character, it's over competence. Now you got to have some competence. I'm not saying you don't have to have competence. You got to have that. Uh, <laughs> you got to have it. But as you get to know people, you just might say, hey, this is not a good fit. But hey, this thing over here, I think you'd be really good at it. Let's let's move you over there and you'll move. Them, and then that person that was average becomes exceptional and yeah. not only exceptional, they start doing the same thing you did with them. And that team starts to become exceptional. Um so that's usually how I kind of go about handling, um, you know, things within my control that I can control. Uh, now, if I have something that's toxic above me, I influence as much as I can. But, you know, over the over the years, I have a lot of <laughs> options now. <laughs> that's um, where you got to have freedom. Of <laughs> I have freedom of mind. <laughs> one, one option, and, and folks who don't know me or hadn't read my books, the option that Carlos and I are talking about is the option to fire the boss. Which means, and this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody's got it, right? For a frontline person can have that. A, a supervisor, a manager, engineers, customer service, anybody in life needs to set up their life so they got freedom and options. And the one option is to fire a bad boss. And yep. it don't mean you have to leave the company. You may get to stay in the company, but go get a different boss in that company. Or you may have to leave the company. You may start your yep. own company. But freedom and options, life's good with freedom and options, yep. Carlo. Yep, it is. It is. And I know we asked that question before about dealing with uh, toxic. I, I, w- I do want to encourage people, if you're in that situation right now, do not stop being yourself. Do not have the mindset of I'm not going to work in excellence because that's only going to hurt you. Always have the mindset of I'm going to work in excellence, not because of who I serve, but because it's, it's who I am as an individual. And also realize that you're dealing with the man in the mirror. So even in a toxic situation, you're learning. You're learning, one, what not to be as a leader. That's that's number one. And two, there is something that you can find that that person may be giving you uh, feedback or maybe give you something. But if you remove what is negative, if you remove what's meant to harm, there is something in there that you can take and that you can say, hey, you know what? Even though all of this might be negative, that's one thing that this individual did say is something I can work on. It is a gap. It is something I can improve on. And you take that and in your mind, you just continue to work and know Thank you for that. You're you, you're uh, promoting me to my next opportunity. 
<laughs> so. That's right. You get a lot of education in there, right? And the key, the key thing a person's got to do is remember everybody else is watching me. That's why I teach yeah. in, in the front lines book that you're working for yourself. If that, that way you're the, you're the same quality individual, no matter if you got a bad boss or a great boss, yep. you, you it's, you're going to be the same, right? Yep. Where you do it may be different, but, but how you're doing it's going to be the same no matter where you at. So that's, that's, that's great uh, share. And, and, we were we pulling up on the hour time frame. I was going to ask you real quick if you can share when you've gotten rid of a toxic person. Have you? How have you seen that team respond to your leadership? Because they've been waiting on you to do it. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever a leader gets rid of a toxic person, everybody's like, "Finally!" finally. It might take them two years or one year or five years or six oh, months, right? What, yep. what have yes. you seen? How have you seen your team respond to carry the load kind of thing until yep. you either replace them or I've heard a lot of leaders say that when they got rid of a toxic person, finally, the ones who fought it forever, when they got rid of them, they never had to replace them because the team stepped up. Have you seen those kind of things? Yep. yep. Uh, in my last role as a uh, general manager, uh, we had some some team members that uh, I were just not a good fit. Uh, gave them opportunities to improve. Didn't didn't take anything. The leaders on the team gave them opportunities to improve. And uh, just like you said, man, we made a decision to cut. And to to kind of move on. And, you know, the crazy thing about it is when you do it right, usually those meetings go like, yeah, I knew this was coming. Y'all have been talking to me. Man, I'm sorry I let you down. I'm sorry. You know, this, this and that. Um, and then we do we do offer grace. Like we, you know, even when I, I fire someone, I understand they have a family. Hey, here's maybe a temp service. You can find some work for the time being. Uh, but I do still try to leave a growth like, you know, your life is going to be what you make it. Uh, and, you know, character is important. So their next opportunity, just here's the things you made a mistake here. But just because you weren't a fit here, it doesn't mean that you can't be successful somewhere else. Just make sure to work on these these things. And usually we can we can walk away um, clean. Uh, I've had instances or even people that, you know, I didn't even re- uh <laughs> remember um, letting go or words and they say, Hey man, I know you let me go here, but the words that you gave helped me and this is what I'm doing now. And I'm like, I some I'm a Mac and Lane line. So I was like, I don't even remember that person, like, man. <laughs> but they took something. So hey, they I, I'm glad that they uh that they did. But usually the team is happy and you'll find that uh your production goes up because a lot of people are not going to continue to Work along someone where you're making the same and they're coasting. Eventually, people are going to be like, all right, yeah, this guy's not working today. I I'm not either. Ain't beat uh, him, right? Yeah, join him. <laughs> so uh, you just want to make sure you're getting rid of the uh, the people that's not uh, that's not showing up and it's not um, adding adding value in a, in a positive way. And value is different. You know, it's, it's, it's different. For yeah, people. one of the things I tell folks, like like you, just, you were just talking about when the when the you know, people, if you can't beat them, join them. And I always tell leaders, uh, you know, whatever the, whatever the worst character on your team is, that that's what you get credit for, whatever the worst is. And, and a lot of leaders don't understand that. But I have to help them understand whatever the worst character is, that's what you're saying is the minimum acceptable. You're saying that's okay. Anybody who steps up and is better than that as a person who has a higher degree of character, yep. they get credit for that. because whatever the bottom is, that's all you expecting. Right. And that's, yep. that's kind of what's the same thing with performance, right? Yep. If somebody says, if the leader's not terminating this guy or a gal and she's, a, she's running 80% productivity, everybody else running a hundred. And finally people say, well, if 80% is acceptable, I'm going to run 80 and I'm going to take it easy. Yep. I go to the break room extra five times a day yep. and sit in the bathroom extra two hours, <laughs> Yep, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to join them, but that's what happens. So, Man, I really appreciate you joining and and sharing. And you know, there's a there's a episode of Real People Getting Real Results coming out today. Actually, right now, while we're speaking, it's being released. Nice. And, and so, anybody watching it, it's last week's episode. But you probably like to go watch it. Uh, it's uh, Justin Poss. You may like to connect with him on LinkedIn, Carlos. Justin Poss. He reminds me a lot of you. He reached out to me in 2022, and he had already been reading my books for like four or five years before. And oh, nice. he, he's, he's like you, man. He's up in New York. He's, he's a director of manufacturing at a uh, Chobani yogurt, the largest number one yogurt, you know, manufacturing company producer in, in the world. And, uh, 
I'm going to send you a link to his CEO, Ria shared with me. His CEO did a, a TED talk. It's called the Anti-CEO. And it's a pretty cool story how he nice. how he started Shobani and just a personal story. And then, you know, how he leads there and what he expects. And so it's pretty cool. You, you'll probably like get some value out of watching uh, Justin's episode, which is just coming out right now. So you don't have two rock stars back to back. That's awesome. Just <laughs> Justin and Carlos. But y'all need to y'all need to know each other anyway, just because y'all on the you know, y'all, y'all high level leaders, high impact leaders. I think he's got, uh, he's director of manufacturing. There's 1200 people working his plant. So I don't know how many report to him directly, but it's probably, a, probably a lot of folks underneath his umbrella there, but he started out down at the bottom and grew, grew his way up. And he's nice. Been a, nice. He, he, he can quote my stuff. Like I do Covey stuff. He just knows like you do my, my books too. And you guys are on the same page. Anything I didn't ask you that you'd like to share or talk about anything about um, your personal journey? I know you'd like to coach and mentor, and I know I don't know where you're at in your business development there, but be sure to share anything if if you're looking for something, people to help that kind of way. Let yep. put it out there. Yep, uh, I would say just um, I'm here to serve and here to uh, help others grow. Uh, I feel like my my life mission is to inspire, motivate, uh, empower others to reach their potential. Um, so if you're you're hungry and, and you're you're ready to grow, please uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn uh, now. The people who do not need to reach out, if you're just looking to get promoted, just looking to make more money, uh, this is not I'm I'm not for that. I'm more uh, for those that are that are wanting to to grow uh, as a result. Those things come. Uh, but I want to make sure that the the mindset is in the right place, which is the overall continuous learning, the growth, the leadership development to have impact on people. Uh, so if that is you. Please uh, reach out. But if you're just searching for just the a paycheck, I'm probably not the uh, the person for you. <laughs> yeah, if they focus on becoming successful, that ain't that ain't you. If they focus on becoming more valuable, that's you, right? Yes, yes. And you got that, a newsletter. Yes. You got a great newsletter you put out. What's tell? Yes, sir. Uh, so I have a, a newsletter, and pretty much on that, I am sharing uh, just leadership lessons. Um, it's it's all centered around leadership, helping you become the uh, the best leader that you can be. Um, do those weekly. Uh, that's on LinkedIn. I have a a podcast I'm trying to get back up and uh, running. So podcast is two parts. Uh, on Sundays, uh, I'm looking to share some uh, some biblical truth from uh, from the Bible. And then outside of that, I'm looking um, for that top podcast just to add as much value um, on uh, some leadership truths, insights, uh, things that I'm, I've learned along the journey. Uh, and just to help you uh, reach your your, your potential uh, from a leadership and personal growth uh, journey. But uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's to inspire, motivate, and empower us to reach their potential. That's that's what my life is, and that's uh, the legacy I want to leave. That's phenomenal. And you talked about when you do this work that you've done, that I've done, you, you ain't focused on making more money, but that's a that's a byproduct. That's a natural byproduct. That's a natural byproduct. Can can you can you share if you're willing to? Not it ain't got to be exact dollars, but can you share like multiples or percentages from the time you first read a leadership book to now, you know, has your income yep. went up one time, two time, five time? Can you, can you, are, you are you even more woo, aware of that? Man, you, have you thought man. about it? Um, woo. So <laughs> I will tell y'all this. When I first started, my first lead job was 13 or $15. Uh, my first promotion was uh, like 50, 50 K. Um, I started reading your books when uh, right before I left DHL to go to Walmart. And that was a 30, 30, 30 or 40 percent increase. Uh, and then from there, man, it's just it's it's been going um, in, well into the six figures now. Uh, but I, I, I would say this. The growth started in 2012. I didn't see the impact of it. Some Sometimes you that that <laughs> do not get discouraged with. I read a book. I'm, I'm about to get promoted today. It does not work like that. But what does happen is the compound effect will happen to where that jump from DHL to, to Walmart was one of the largest uh, increase I had. And it was life changing for, for me and my wife at the time. We were trying to buy a house. That job allowed us to do that. Down payment. Uh, first time. I'm going to share the story. Uh, we got plenty of I, time, man. OK. <laughs> OK. So uh, when I was at DHL, I didn't know I didn't know my value. I didn't know my worth. Right. I, I really did. not I was just I was just so excited. I was learning, learning, learning. Um, then my mindset changed and I realized I was training other people in the same level and they were making 15, 
thir- you know, thirteen, fifteen thousand dollars more than me. And I'm like, man, hold on, something ain't something ain't right. I'm training, you know, uh, people that's making more. So at that point, I started entertaining because I already had people reaching out to me. Uh, you know, I was doing little, little, little things on LinkedIn, not a lot. Uh, but Walmart reached out. I said, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go and, you know, entertain it. It was right. It was literally the building right in front of mine. Uh, went, went there, had the interview, longest interview I ever had, five hour interview. Uh, we were walking and, you know, I was just being me. I was talking to team members. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Uh, we were walking. I was picking up trash, putting in a trash can and, you know, we got to the end, did the interview, and literally the next day, I got, I got, uh, the guy called me, said, hey, man, um, never made an offer this fast, but making an offer to you, uh, and he's like, it's not anything you really said, it was how you were during the interview process, we're walking the floor, you were talking to the team, and you were, you picked up trash, and that's one of our values here at Walmart, um, and I'm making a decision based off of that, you'll have the offer, so I was excited, I pulled over, I was on the way home, I was literally right in front of the building, uh, cause that's where they hired. And when I saw their offer, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm going, like, I'll be there. <laughs> and I called my wife and I was like, Oh my gosh. I said, they just offer this. And she's like, did you ask for a sign on? I said, how dare you? I would not ask for a sign on <laughs> with this amount of money. I said, no, do you I not know how much? A pen. All I needed was a pen. Look at that. <laughs> so my wife's just like, just ask for a sign on. Uh, so I was like, oh, yeah, uh, do you mind? Uh, yeah, I'm like, uh, yeah, sign on. And I was, man, I was so nervous. The guy's like, yeah, man, sure. Uh, how, how, how does uh, 8K sound? Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then the wife said, okay, bring it on over. You don't deserve none of that. <laughs> oh, uh, man. So, you know, that was the first uh, big, big change. And then from there, man, it was, we started doing leadership book study. And I stayed there for a while, uh, helped three leaders get promoted uh, while I was there. One of them, one of them's goal was like, Carlos, I've been here for five years. I've been in the same position. This is what I want. I was like, hey, you got everything you need to get there. Uh, Within eight months, they got the promotion they wanted. They stay a little while longer. And then I said, hey, um, I'm trying to move an apartment. I actually need to be here. And I said, all right, let's put a game plan together. We put a game plan together. They got that goal. And me and that, that person, we they just continued to uh, excel and grow. And the beautiful thing about leadership is as you meet people that are hungry, you keep to bring those people along uh, along with you. So that's that's what they've been doing. They've been training and going other places and taking the talent with them. Um, but man, that, that was uh, life changing, but man, I'm, I'm in, in the six figures and I tell people, if you stay with it, um, you're going to get around the right people and what you learn compounds over time. And then you have that moment where all of it kind of comes together in just a, a crazy way. And you have those, you go from the, you know, the eight or 10% increase and you have that crazy 40, 50% increase. And you're like, oh my goodness, I got to how does this happen? Um, but, you know, tell people, stay encouraged, keep reading. And it's OK. We're reading the same book. I do it all the time. I told Mac I'm about to, about to start back on this one. Um, you know, you, you just get you get something different every time. Um, but just stay encouraged in your journey. Uh, if you're dealing with managers that are trying to manage you, just stay focused on the leadership journey. It's, it's not a lot of us out there. But the ones that you meet, man, it's it's life changing, and value, you know they value yep. you at a high level when you meet. Yes. one. like when when you yes. come across somebody who values this, they, they gonna get a they gonna get an offer, ain't they? <laughs> yeah. Oh, they, oh, it, without a doubt. Look, it's uh, and and yes, they're gonna get an offer. Not only that, when you work for someone that 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 is a leader, they not only get an offer, they get top dollar. Let me let me say that I brought in some leaders where they were trying to pay, and I was like, nope, mm mm, uh. A little higher. What's the max? We can? Yep. Get, yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep, this, I know what this person's going to do. And you put people in a better situation. And in return, you 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 get uh, you just don't get people's hands. You get their hearts. And that's that's what you want as a leader. You you want people that uh, want to come and work, and they see it just not as a job, but as a place where they're growing, they're developing, and it's changing uh, their life and their family's life for the better. I'm ex- I'm excited for your future, man, and all the future of the people that that you out there helping and, and touching is is really powerful. And can you just share percentage wise, and then then I'll let you go. 
like a percentage wise of far back as you can remember, I know it's just a rough estimate, but how, how many, how many people do you interview that, that talk about without you asking them and share about that they read leadership development books and that, I mean, how many people is almost none. It's, it's, it's Mac, Mac is this. Yeah. That never gets uh, talked about uh, in interviews at all. And if you talk about it with, if you do an interview, you talk about it and the person above or the person you're interviewing doesn't read, that's a, just a red flag. Just don't even. If, if they ain't interested. <laughs> they're not interested and they're not growing. All the stuff they talk about opportunities is probably just uh, something that they get you in the door. They'll train you for two days. And then next thing you know, it's all right. You're on your own. <laughs> yep. so, but and not you, not many. Not many. Probably less than 5% of the people that are the avid readers of leadership development and personal yep. growth. Yep. And I'm I'm taking out the ones that I know that are doing it that I've just brought on or have met, but the ones that I no one is uh, no one's really really reading. That's how easy it is to stand out. That's why I wanted to ask you that, and because I know you probably heard my episode 26 on my podcast where I tell people to start reading, start documenting, create you a <clears throat> a spreadsheet or a word document of the books you've read, the title, the author, the the date you completed them, and when you go to to interview with somebody like Carlos, I promise you. If Carlos was interviewing you and, and whatever your resume says, it was even halfway acceptable relative to competency. When he sees that sheet of paper on the back, you've been reading all these kind of books that he's been reading. You're going to talk to that person, ain't you? They're going to yep. go to the we, top of your list, Carlos. What do you think? We won't even have an interview. We'll be talking about, oh, man, tell me about the books. It could be, I, because, you know, when people are reading, they're actively growing. You can ask questions and you know that, OK, they've been applying what they're reading. Yeah, this is someone I want one on team. Yep. Without a doubt. It doesn't matter if they're entry level or, or an executive position. It doesn't make any difference. It tells nope. you something special about that person. And when you're the kind yep. of leader that you are and the kind of person you are, that, that's what you're trying to build a team of those. If yep. you if you ever can assemble that team and leaders like you, they got to develop that team. Right. You got to build it. You got to get the good people with potential. Then you got to do the book studies. You got to do yep. the development. Rhea and I got the Blue Collar Leadership Academy now, a whole video series on all of our books where leaders can can use us to teach their folks. But somehow you got to do it because sometimes people will say, well, we don't want the books. I'll say, okay, you ain't got to get books when, when we come to speak. But if you want to do what we're talking about, you either got to read some books, you got to listen to some podcasts, you got to watch some video, you got to develop, somehow you got to develop your team. Yep. Just bringing somebody in to talk to them once a year or something like that ain't going to do much good. Make yep. them feel good for a minute, but nothing's going to change. You got to have a leader like Carlos on the team Somewhere it needs to be the top leader of an organization cascading it down and expecting it. But I'm proud of you, man. You just getting warmed up, Carlos. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm, man, I'm excited to uh, to be on this journey and excited to be uh, alongside uh, great people like you, Mac. And man, we're going to see each other again on this uh, call tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you'll be on there. I'm excited <laughs> to get on there. Yeah, that'll be Rhea's uh, Ladder of Influence book. So, yes, sir. Uh, I think that, that about wraps it up, man. You got anything else? Man, Matt, we can go all day, man, if you want to. No, I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> hey, what you ought to do, Carlos, you, you ain't got to do it. But if I were you, one, one guy has done it. One of the guys I uh, did an interview with, but he took this video and made it a featured video on his LinkedIn so everybody could see. Oh, who I know I could do that. Right? I, I, anybody who does a video like this with me, because the video ain't about me. You know, you, you made it a lot about me because you've read a lot of my stuff and I mentored you a lot, but it's really about personal growth and leadership development. But what it really does, whether you made it about me or somebody else, anybody doing these videos with me is showcasing you, right, as a person. Like like you could go you could go watch any of those videos that I've recorded with other people and, and, and a leader like you, when you see it, you're going to get the character side of that person, yep. right? This is like a, you basically, I've told people, and some people have done this, people I've interviewed with, when they were looking for the next job, they, they took their interview and sent them, you know, the YouTube link to the to the, whoever's nice. hiring them because they say, hey, I've done this interview with Max Story and you, you can learn about me by watching that video. And if they really want to hire you, like if somebody did that with you, you'd be wanting to watch that video because yep. you see who they are in an authentic kind of manner. This, this right here is it's why I'm so glad you got on here, Carlos. I don't know where your journey is going to go. It doesn't even matter where it's going to go. This right here is a good showcase. For you, because that's the intention of it. I want people to know anybody I interview. I want anybody watching to know who you are. I ain't worried about if they know who I am. If they watch it, they probably already know. I want them to know who you are. And that's that's why Rhea and I decided to do this series 
because I know so many cool people like you. And when y'all volunteer to help me help others, we all on this on the same mission. Yeah. And and I still got a lot of people lined up. It's taking me forever to get all these folks, but <laughs> but but it's pretty cool. I always recommend all of you, anybody watching or listening, connect with these people I'm interviewing on LinkedIn. Get to know get to know this whole lineup of people because all these people I'm interviewing there. They're, they're going somewhere, some sometime. A lot of them already come from a, a long ways from where they used to be. So I look forward to seeing you in the morning, Carlos, on Jason yes, Denham. Call. And anybody don't know Jason Denham, he was episode one in this series. So you can go back and watch an interview with, with Jason, anyone listening. You ain't got nothing else, Carlos? Man, I think that's uh, – I think we covered it. Covered about, uh, just about all of it. <laughs> all we can squeeze in without going all day, right? We could go all day. <laughs> <laughs> all right we might have to do a round two with you some sometime down the road once i get everybody else at least a round one because a lot of <laughs> folks on here really will do follow-ups because all you are growing so most pretty much anybody i'm interviewing by the time I, i'm able to get back to them which might be a year or so most of them are going to be at a whole different level they can add, yep. you know it's, it's probably going to be an ongoing thing and there'll be some folks who come back so thank you again for taking your yes, time sir. appreciate you for all you're doing Make sure you let me know about the Happy Kids book. When once you get that, you look through it. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> once the little one's old enough for you to use it, and if it's if if they're already old enough, once you see the book that that you're able to do it, sh share with me about that. That might be yep. something we come back and do a, a video about down the road, just talking about something about that. I don't know, man. I, make sure you I, let me I would know. love that. I would love that, man. The impact of uh, leadership on, on uh, home life with kids. Yep, I, I would love that. Yeah, so that, that'll that be a neat journey you'll have with, with your son that you can share, but especially about that book, because we can talk about how you got introduced to it right here when you were doing this video. So it, it'll just all, it all compounds. Yes, well, all sir. right, sir. It's been a, a, a pleasure to get to see you. I don't always get to see you. I talk to you. We've had a lot of those one hour calls, haven't we? It wasn't <laughs> we just had, one. <laughs> it's just We had a couple. We've had a couple, man. All of it. Uh man, during some tough times too, Max. So really uh really appreciate you, man. Um uh, those were some I know some of those calls were man, they were they were tough. They were you tough. You handled them like a champ though, and look where you at. Yes, sir. You you just continuing to grow. They're gonna be some more tough times. Like I yep. tell everybody, <laughs> if life's good right now. You, you better put your life jacket on because there's a tsunami on <laughs> it's the coming. way. <laughs> it is. There's a tsunami coming for you. All you, you, all you got to do is keep living. It's coming. Yep. It's going to hit you. It's coming. It is. That is that is a true statement. Personally and professionally. All yes, right. Sir. We just can't get off, Carlos. <laughs> Rhea's probably like, Mac done tried to get off like 15 times. He won't quit. <laughs> we got to go mountain biking before it rains. <laughs> Oh man, that'd be nice. Now I'm trying to get uh, do some more outdoor stuff, man. I love uh, walking. That's one of been one of my uh, one of my things now, man. Walking, taking notes, reflection time. As you get older, Carlos, you might want to check out mountain bike. It's super good. It works your upper body. It's cardio. It's I tell people on a mountain bike, you more likely to get hurt, but on a road bike, you look more likely to get killed because somebody <laughs> run over you. <laughs> you might wreck a mountain bike, but usually that ain't too bad. And uh, but mountain biking is phenomenal fitness because it just keeps your heart rate up and nice it's just it's phenomenal I, I love it since i've been able to get back into it but a lot of people that's where i met uh greg the other day on the mountain bike trail that i was telling nice. you about earlier he, he's out there riding and any of, any of us getting older i'm 55 now i know you ain't caught up with me yet but keep <laughs> living you're gonna catch up <laughs> so one day i'm gonna quit living <laughs> but this will extend our life man but i sure do appreciate it carlos yes sir me too all right folks Thanks for listening. I hope you got some value. Make sure you connect with Carlos, Carlos on LinkedIn. Subscribe to his newsletter. And uh, talk to you next time. Make it happen or someone else will. It might as well be you. Are you serious about taking your career and your life to the next level and beyond? Check out Max Story's Blue Collar Leadership Series books and others, now available on audio, along with paperback and ebooks at Amazon and Audible. Please visit bluecollarleadership.com to learn about Max books, programs, special offers, and more. Thank you for listening to the Blue Collar Leadership Podcast.